Claudia Shitty, are you ready? Hello, yes, we're ready. Okay. Thank you for the floor. I'll be sharing the screen. Uh, you have 50 minutes uh, to present your work, followed by uh, five minutes of the question for the audience. Uh, Claudia, uh, you can begin, please. Yeah, so we have decided to focus on creating an adaptive network model which simulates the role of the gut microbiome on the circadian cycle, which is the 24 hour body clock. Um, on mood and on insomnia, which is the sleep disorder where you struggle to fall asleep through the gut brain axis. Next slide, please. So the microbiome is the population of microorganisms that live on your body. And here we focus specifically on those in the gastrointestinal tract. Um, so the composition of this microbiome affects different biological processes in your gut. So these can then travel along the microbiome gut-brain axis using neurotransmitters, hormones, or inflammatory cytokines. Um, and these then affect the biochemistry of your brain, in turn affecting mood, circadian rhythm, and insomnia. Next slide, please. There's three main pathways which are part of this microbiome gut-brain axis. So there's the neuroendocrine pathway, the immunoregulatory pathway, and the vagus nerve pathway. Um, but we decided to focus on the neuroendocrine and immunoregulatory pathways because we wanted to focus on the endocrine and immune systems and how these work to regulate different hormones which are important for a regulated sleep cycle. Uh, so we've got the neuroendocrine pathway on the left, and this is where the endocrine cells in the gut are stimulated by these microorganisms of that gut microbiome. Um, depending on what these microorganisms are, it depends on what, these, um, what molecules these bacteria are secreting. Um, and dependent on that, different neurotransmitters are released that then travel along the bloodstream along the HPA axis, which is the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. Um, this pathway coordinates the body's stress response, um, and it does this through coordinating cortisol regulation, um, cortisol being the body's main stress hormone. Uh, so tryptophan metabolism is also regulated through this pathway. Um, tryptophan is a precursor of the hormones serotonin and melatonin, um, which are the two main sleep regulating hormones. Uh, we then have the immunoregulatory pathway, which is the pathway to the right, um, where immune cells in the gut detect pathogenic microorganisms, which would cause these cells to secrete pro-inflammatory cytokines. Um, and these cytokines travel along the bloodstream and can cause inflammation all over the body. Sometimes these pathogenic bacteria can produce neurotoxic metabolites. Um, this travels along the blood to the brain and can cause lots of damage there to different uh, molecular processes, which can, infect, which can affect mood, circadian rhythm and can increase the chances of insomnia or worsen um, insomnia that the person would already have. Um, this can cause inflammation in the gut, so you can get a leaky and inflamed gut, meaning that these toxins released by the bacteria pass from the gut and then into the blood. Next slide, please. So if you want a healthy microbiome to reduce your chances of insomnia or improve this condition, you can try to reduce your stress levels, um, have a healthy diet, maybe take some probiotics because lower stress means lower cortisol levels. And when cortisol is too high, this can dysregulate your circadian rhythm. 
Um, this also regulates the clock genes. Um, clock genes encode the proteins that regulate that circadian rhythm. So we chose to focus on two probiotics, Bifidobacterium and Lactobacillus, because these are both found naturally in a high concentration in your gut microbiome. Um, they have very beneficial effects in upregulating serotonin and melatonin production in your body. If you have more melatonin and serotonin, then generally insomnia is improved. Um, the current drugs on the market for insomnia have lots of side effects and are not very effective over the long term. So research into probiotics to treat this condition um, is definitely worthwhile. Next slide, please. So these are the 30 states that we used for our network simulations. Um, on the left side in the pink, you can see all of our states for the bacteria um, that we're researching, the various neurotransmitters like cortisol, serotonin, melatonin, um, states for insomnia and stress. And on the right side in the blue and the purple, we have our adaptation states that correspond to our neurotransmitters and stress to better reflect neuroplasticity. So in the blue, we have adaptation states for connection weights, and in the purple, we have adaptation states for speed factors. Um, next slide, please. And here is our adaptive network model. You can see that it has three layers. At the top two layers, the first order and second order reification levels are our adaptation levels. Next slide. And here are the combination functions we used in our model. So the identity function was used for states that do not change in their, um, their levels, such as the stress, the external stress that uh, the person is undergoing. A logistic or advanced logistic sum is used for states that change um, in general. So this is used for the majority of our states. Um, and heavy and learning is used for uh, adaptivity and um, our adaptation levels, uh, such as the um, co connectivity weight and the speed factors. And bounded growth, uh, we use this for the states that represent bacteria because we wanted to better reflect how bacteria can often grow in the gut microbiome. Next slide. So in my section, I'll, I'll be describing in detail which specific scenarios we decided to model in the dedicated software environment in MATLAB with respect to our domain, our intended, our intended expectations from the simulations we ran and our final inferences from the graphs generated. For the sake of uh, simplicity, we ignore the first and second order adaptive states for the purpose of analysis. So in our first state, we have low levels of probiotics and high levels of bad bacteria in the gut. So as uh, we have achieved this by taking initial values for probiotics as zero and for the bad bacteria in the gut, we have used uh, the bounded growth function and it starts from 0 0.8 as the initial value. So as, um, as we can see that um, uh, we, in, uh, we intended to look at the effects produced on the system state of insomnia, which is X15 state over here, uh, and its corresponding effect felt as sleep deprivation, which is our X16 state um, uh, in the scenario of imbalance of bacteria, such that we have no probiotics, which is our lactobacillus and bifidobacteria, but there is high levels of bad bacteria, uh, which are the pathogenic bacteria, such as um, uh, Clostridium perfringens, Staphylococcus, etc., that release toxins and or trigger disease in the system. So this uh, this scenario is what we term as dysbiosis. Um, as expected, we can see that the X4 state, which is our immune cell, um, uh, it increases and to, to bring the level of bad bad bacteria in in the gut down. Uh, this causes gut uh, permeability to increase, where this bad bacteria then permeates into the bloodstream. Uh, EEC1, which is our first uh, enteroendocrine cell pathway, which activates HPA1 axis, is not activated, uh, but, but there is uh, 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 an effect that is felt, which, which uh, brings the levels of cortisol up and uh, the perceived state of stress that is felt by the body, as we would have expected in the normal situation. Um, 
next we have our scenario two, where we have high levels of probiotics, but low levels of bad bacteria in the gut. This is the opposite of our first uh, scenario. And we have done the same, uh, where we have kept the bad bacteria at a zero level throughout. And our probiotics, um, lactobacillus and bifidobacteria show uh, bounded growth. Um, I think, I'm sorry, I think my computer hanged. I'm sorry for you. Uh, I'm sorry, I uh, because of the my low battery, I cannot share anymore. Can somebody share screen? I can share the screen, just give me one second. All right, thank you so much for, so uh, our intention in this situation was to find how the bacteria uh, react in, in, in independent situations where they are not reacting with each other at the same time. So uh, the first HPA state, which is activated by the lactobacillus, then acts, um, has a negative impact uh, uh, on the HP axis, which, which uh, brings down the cortisol levels and the effect of stress uh, and in turn, uh, the level of insomnia and sleep deprivation. In, the, in a similar manner, the bifidobacteria uh, acts on the HPA2 axis, which releases serotonin, and it also acts on the tryptophan, which uh, produces melatonin. This also brings down our insomnia and sleep, dep sleep deprivation levels and leads to the clock gene regulation. Next slide, please. So lastly, we have uh, used... Uh, uh, we have a run a scenario where there's low levels of probiotics and low levels of bad bacteria in the gut, which means that we have kept our uh, all our bacteria at a level of uh, initial value of zero throughout the runtime. This means this leads to a state which is termed as dysbacteriosis, but this is not a usual situation because we usually have lactobacillus and um, bifidobacteria in the in the gut. Uh, but in case uh, they are absent. Uh, all our, uh, the immune response is not activated. The cytokine response is triggered due to the constant external stressor factor, which is at a constant of one. Throughout this raises cortisol production and the system then has, uh, next slide please, the system then has a perceived state of insomnia, but lower than in the case of uh, where there's uh, bad or pathogenic bacteria in the blood as well. Next slide please. So uh, in conclusion, we'll be uh, dis discussing some of the future perspectives that our model and our research could have in, the, in further research. So first, uh, there could be bacteria in competition where good and bad bacteria both compete for food and resources to grow and proliferate in the same home environment, which is the gut, which then could have implications for mood and sleep. Um, next is real world implications where uh, real world situations such as night shifts or eating disorders or jet lag and such could be modeled. Uh, there could also be a one 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 state where all the uh, three types of bacteria are active and interacting in the same uh, in the same home environment. Uh, we have kept the external stressor value at one throughout. Uh, there could also be different external stressor values which could then have their own functions for growth. Uh, there is also a strain of bacteria called opportunistic bacteria. That, uh, that unlike bad bacteria do not attack the, uh, the system uh, immediately, but they, uh, they wait for the immune, uh, immune cells to, the immune system of the body to, uh, to reach a low enough state and then they attack and uh, really, uh, release cortisol, which then increases stress and insomnia. So I think our, our, our model and research was a simplified and organized effort into modeling bacteria present in the gut microbiome and their role on the overall mood, sleep wake cycles, circadian rhythm, and any resultant sleep disorders in the person, such as insomnia, we, we are very happy to present at BICA. Thank you. Uh, any questions, please? Uh, thank you, Sulagna, Claudia, and Kinley for your participation. 
Uh, now we will proceed with the questions. Uh, if anyone has any question, please your, raise your hand, please. Oh, I have a question. Okay. Hi. Um, a system like this that you're uh, modeling here is quite complex and uh, there are many chain reactions that are connected to, to each other. And uh, my question is, uh, how can you validate if the simulation data that you are generating with your model can be uh, uh, really what is happening in, in, in real life? Did you have a, a standard procedure for doing this validation or you just simulate and you know need to believe in in the uh, what the simulation data provide provides you so we did qualitatively validate um but we didn't numerically validate because we have not yet found enough data to be able to do so on this topic um, so what our model is based off of is just research papers um, discussing conclusions between the effects of uh, like one hormone on a certain process. Um, and then we built, built it up around lots of different research papers on these topics. Um, so we would definitely need to numerically validate this uh, model so that we would have a greater like, accuracy and make it more realistic. Um, but that was what we could do with our time so far. But, but it would be interesting, for example, if you, even, even on a qualitative way, if you can connect saying, okay, for example, study A and B uh, reviewed the such and such kind of phenomena, and this is what is happening in the simulation. The other study uh, provides such and such, and this is what is we are having in, in our simulation because this will uh, give credibility to, to the model that you are, you are building. So I, I think it, it would be a good suggestion to, even if you don't have a quantitative validation, you can validate it qualitatively by uh, presenting the studies that you use to, to show uh, that your process is doing uh, what is expected to do, okay? Just a suggestion. Definitely. If we had more time for a presentation, that would definitely be a good thing we could include. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other question? Okay, Howard, please. Yes, hello. Hello. Um, hello. Hi, Ricardo. It's, it's nice to hear you. I, I don't think I can see you, though. Um, I thought that was a good question. It, it's an interesting topic, the probiotics. We've known for about 20 years that they're quite effective for there's double blind controlled studies now for, you know, for depression, for insomnia, um, for irritable bowel syndrome, which actually is part of psychiatry. So, you know, a lot of psychiatric issues, but also for colitis, Crohn's disease. But somehow it, it hasn't made it into a mainstream medicine just because it takes so long. And I guess there's, um, I guess um, there may be not as much profit potential as like in other pharmaceuticals. Um, however, but, but there, I think it's, I think your question, Ricardo, is a good question. It's so hard to actually do trials, which is why, you know, it's not part of mainstream medicine if, um, if I see people that have depression and I give them antidepressants, that's great. If I, my recommendation was probiotics, people would say, you know, what's going on? But um, I, I think the problem is it's really hard to do the studies, although I, I think it'd be interesting doing meta-analysis. Um, people have done it in other fields. There's somebody, Cipriani, who's done it for antidepressants, comparing all sorts of situations, which it would just be too hard to do. The trials cost many millions of dollars to start figuring out what's going on. But um, I thought it was a good talk. I thought it was interesting, a nice system that may have some utility. Um, a very nice talk. Thank you. Yeah, I agree um, that this could be taken a lot further. We just need to find, you know, some good amount of data to be able to uh, progress our model on this. 
Um, but it's a really interesting topic, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, thank you for your presentation. 